Hi, this is Taryn Grom, editor of Pharma Voice. We met with numerous inspirational thought leaders at this year's DIA annual conference as part of our Editors Take video series. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. In this episode, Taryn meets with Wenda Brennan, VP, Global Pharmacovigilance, UBC. Wenda, welcome to DIA in San Diego. Thank you very much. Very happy to be here. It's a pleasure to have you be part of our Editors Take video program. Thank you for inviting me. Let's talk about pharmacovigilance, My okay? My favorite topic. Love it. <laughs> Historically, what were the traditional modalities for reporting adverse events? Well, traditionally, over the last 20 years, things have changed dramatically. Um, traditionally, reporting of adverse events was a very manual process. We've moved along in the technology, um, moving to ECTD submissions and um, E2BR3 submissions, uh, but we still have a long way to go in the technology advancement in pharmacovigilance, and there's many areas that are ripe for evaluating and moving forward in the technology side. What changes have occurred in recent years in reporting adverse events, especially in light of the explosion of technological advancements and access? One of the biggest changes is the mindset change. And that mindset change was going from reporting of adverse, collecting of adverse events um, and um, reacting to signals or trending to the mindset now of a very proactive approach and really monitoring the data, still collecting the data, but monitoring it proactively, looking at the chemical structure, making sure that we're looking at other products that might have a similar chemical structure and what those adverse events are. The, you know, that thought process has come a long way. And I think one of the examples, excellent example, is the PML example with Tysabri. And with Tysabri, the there was a PML, which is a life-threatening adverse event, um, which was really monitored very closely and able to be, you know, looked at and determine for which patients were most susceptible to having this adverse reaction and being able to monitor those patients or take those patients, take the, you know, withdraw, withdraw the drug from those patients so that we could avoid an adverse event rather than react to an adverse event that has already happened. It's a really important um, advancement. It is. It is. And, you know, the, the monitoring for signals and trending is definitely the direction that the industry has gone. Wonderful. Can you speak to several non-traditional modalities, specifically the benefits and risks? So non-traditional modalities are things that are the, the future for us. Um, and those are things such as using, using machine learning, artificial intelligence to gather that data um, very quickly and allowing the people to focus on analysis of the data rather than the gathering of the data. Um, and I think that's probably, you know, the biggest area. So when you talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning and how it's going to advance the industry, can you point to a couple of specific examples that you're seeing right now? Sure. There's usually areas where there's a lot of data is the best place to go with artificial intelligence and machine learning and things such as the um, scientific literature monitoring where you're monitoring large volumes of data is an area where I've seen artificial intelligence in, uh, applied. Um, intake of the information, getting it from the call center or from the um, patient investigator into the database, getting that into the database um, and not doing manual data entry is another big area. Um, some other areas for advancement that we're looking at is the databases themselves. The two main databases that are used in the industry have really not seen a lot of technology advancements in the last 20 years. They have, again, reacted to regulatory changes. And now there's some competition coming and that comp competition is really driving both those two main and other companies to enter this area and bring us better database yeah. solutions. Um, so these database improvements and enhancements that we're looking at include things such as um, marrying 
the different databases. So you have a call center database, you have an adverse event database, you have a clinical database. And right now they don't, for the most part, talk to each other. And so these, what we're doing is advancing to not having to capture the information from one database and re-enter it into another, another database or compare, have to manually compare the data in the databases to reconcile the data. Fantastic. Now we're all about trends. So talk to me about what some of the trends you're seeing on the horizon for pharmacovigilance. Trends that I'm seeing on the horizon for pharmacovigilance, um, I think are things that, that we've spoken about and most of it is technology um, and obviously trying to do you know, better, faster, cheaper. Um, and you'll, you've, we have been seeing a large trend of movement to other locations for pharmacovigilance and, you know, really kind of expanding countries that may not have had a lot of experience in pharmacovigilance, and really opening up um, many countries to the jobs that are available in pharmacovigilance. And then the technology, certainly. Is there a couple of countries in particular where you're seeing a lot of the movement? Well, you know, obviously India was probably one of the early adopters. Sure. Um, now there are some other, you know, Asia com countries, um, Central Eastern Europe, um, you know, the South America area are all areas where pharmacovigilance is really starting to uh, build a presence. And finally, what is the overarching message to sponsors and their patients in terms of pharmacovigilance that you would like to uh, express in today's bi biopharmaceutical landscape? Probably the overarching is just the passion that people have for pharmacovigilance. It has nothing to do with you know what what company you work for, um, you know what product it is. It's all about pharmacovigilance and patient safety. And pharmacovigilance, people that are drawn to pharmacovigilance are drawn to it because there's a passion for it and making sure that the medicines that are available are safe and effective for our patients. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us with our Editor's Take video program. Thank you so much for having me. For more information on this topic, visit our Thought Leaders website. For more Editor's Take videos from the DIA Annual Conference, visit www.pharmavoice.com. Thanks for joining us.